Hello everybody and welcome to day three of the Abu Dhabi Desert Challenge. This is Inside Dakar and we will shortly be getting to some fresh interviews, some highlights and some behind the scenes from the Abu Dhabi Desert. Today it's been another scorchingly hot day in the desert, but Team Audi Sport and the Audi RSQ e-tron have prevailed and finished third fastest on today's stage, also extending their lead to more than 30 minutes. So we will head shortly out to the desert, but first here's a look at the route for today. Today's third stage of the Abu Dhabi Desert Challenge starts and finishes near the Qasa Al Sarab bivouac. Yesterday's stage was the longest of the rally and today's is said to be the most technical. A short road section and then 255 kilometers of special stage. The day's total is 290 kilometers. That was today's route. Now it is time to head out to the desert and find out exactly what it has been like out there today. And um, Stefan Moser, can you hear me? You're looking surprisingly comfortable. Yeah, thanks, Molly. This is definitely the most relaxed position I've ever had at the Dakar Rally. Believe me, it's unbelievable. It's a place opposite to our media center uh, for the journalists, for the guests here around at the rally, and it's completely relaxed. It wasn't relaxed outside today because it was windy. A lot of sand was flying through the air. The sand is everywhere. Wherever I go, I feel the scent on my body. And we can talk about this situation and how it helps or how difficult it was outside with Stefan and Edo that just arrived to sitting here on the opposite side to me. And uh, we will come back in a moment. So back to you, Molly. Thank you very much. Enjoy your time there on your carpet looking sofa thing. We will be speaking with Stefan, Stefan and Edouard shortly, but it is time to have a look at some fantastic images from today. It's time for the highlights of day three. Today's stage three of the Abu Dhabi Desert Challenge was proof of how tough this desert rally is. The crews had to tackle another loop around Hamim with 255 stage kilometers in scorching heat. Early on, Stefan Petterhansel put pressure on Yazid Al Raji and overtook him. Team Audi Sport kept out of trouble and finished the stage in third place. The brand is in a very comfortable overall position now. After early setbacks for Nasser Alatia and Sebastian Loeb two days ago, today it was another top contender who struggled. Yazid Al Raji from Saudi Arabia faced problems in the last part of the stage and lost his second place in the overall classification to Martin Prokop. This means that Audi drivers Stefan Peter Hansel and Edouard Boulanger have massively increased their lead in the Audi RSQ e-tron. Yesterday, they had an advantage of less than eight minutes ahead of Al Raji. Now, the two Frenchmen are more than 30 minutes clear of Czech driver Martin Prokop after three of the five stages in Abu Dhabi. Audi has held the lead throughout the whole rally so far, but Stefan Petterhansel remains cautious. So, we are in a good position and we will try to manage uh, uh, to the end, uh, but uh, Every day we, we learn something with, uh, with our car, so I hope that everything will be okay for the end of the race. P3 today was the second podium finish in a stage for Audi in the Abu Dhabi Desert Challenge. And now Team Audi Sport enjoy a commanding lead with just two more days to go. 
some spectacular images there from the day in the Abu Dhabi desert and it's incredible to see that they could finish the day with a third position overall and extending that lead to more than 30 minutes let's head straight back out to the bivouac to Stefan Stefan and Edouard surely that position you're in right now is a little bit more comfortable than the cockpit of the Audi RSQ e-tron yeah, it's quite cool here outside to talk with uh, Stefan in this position, uh, but it wasn't so cool and it wasn't so easy outside today, right? No, exactly. It was a third day. Was, uh, and then it was a little bit easier than yesterday because uh, maybe the sand was a little bit harder and the stage was uh, shorter also. And uh, today for us it was really nice because we had no problem at all, no pension, nothing. The car was really perfect and it was possible to to keep the same spins in the end, uh, the start to the, the the end, so it was really nice to drive. You just told me I, I named you yesterday, Mr. Dakar, Mr. Abu Dhabi Desert Shell, but you still have some other names. Ah, I still have some records for some really famous race of motorcycle. You know, for example, uh, six days of enduro. It was uh, ESDE. It's a race that I am the record man also of the victory <laughs> five times. A race in France also, I'm, I have a lot of record for, with the victory. Is that unbeatable? <laughs> well, I don't know, but uh, the most uh, important thing for sure is still the Dakar. <laughs> we extend the lead today uh, up to 30 minutes and 18 seconds. What does it mean for the last two days? You know, for us, uh, the most important thing is try to win the overall uh, race. So it means that uh, to, to win a stage, it's not really important. So we will try to manage the death gap. And it's not necessary for us to push uh, really like a crazy, but we will, more, we will manage more all the parameters of the car to be safe, uh, no mistake of driving. So this is uh, something that we, yeah, we can start to think about uh, the victory, but uh, still two long days. So everything is possible. Especially the day tomorrow will be hard. Yes, 250 kilometers around and uh, like I said every day and every year, you know, each kilometer you can do a mistake, it can be a, a trap, you can find a trap in front of you. So we need to be really focused, concentrated and uh, to go kilometers by kilometers and to, yeah, to, we hope to cross the finish line. Thanks, Stefan. Uh, I come back to Edo. Uh, we talk about all his names, Mr. Dakar <laughs> and Mr. Abu Dhabi Desert Jalet. Uh, what did you think when you got the first telephone call from him uh, to invite you to become a co-driver? Uh, Not just Edo, I think. Yeah, of course, <laughs> I, <laughs> I know clearly I, I, I have no record on my name. Um, no, of course, I remember clearly the moment he called me to confirm that I was uh, uh, chosen to be next to you. and. Uh, uh, I can tell you that I was uh, in vacation in Letuke in a family house and I clearly remember every moment of this, uh, this time. Did you follow him when you were young? Of course, I mean, it's, uh, if I start to be a writer, it's uh, his fault because I was looking to him in, on the TV. I was uh, saying, uh, one day I want to be like him, uh, like this man. I want to cross the desert in motorbikes. I mean, uh, my brother and I started motorbikes uh, looking to, um, to the TVs of Dakar. And uh, our heroes were Stéphane, uh, Lalé, uh, and uh, Neveu and Oriol. I mean, all the French riders who make the history of Dakar. And we, we start riding the bike to make Dakar and uh, nothing else. We are not interested by something else. Did you sometimes uh, sit in the car and think about is it real or not? <laughs> uh, especially at the beginning. And now, of course, it's only uh, 18 months that we are together. And uh, each time we are racing together, I realize by the chance I have. So clearly, every day is... Uh, uh, yeah, a winning day for me. <laughs> Stefan, I have to ask you once uh, another question because it was very windy outside. We saw a lot of, of uh, sand and dust over the dunes. Uh, is it helpful for you or is it uh, difficult? No, normally when there is a lot of wind, it's more difficult because the wind push the sand to over the dunes and you don't see really if you are at the top of the dune or if it's uh, just uh, sand flying. So it can be really dangerous. So when there is a lot of wind, like today, I'm a little bit more safe than normally. So take care for yourself tomorrow and hopefully we have not too much wind and good temperatures for you and the car. Thank you very much thank for you. joining us. Back to you, Molly.
Thank you very much, guys. It was great to hear about the, your day in the desert and well done on that third position overall in scorching temperatures exceeding more than 35 degrees. And it was great to hear that it was a trouble free day. No problems with the car whatsoever. Now it's time to find out exactly what it means to be a chief engineer at Team Audi Sport. Here is today's backstage video. Hello, my name is Daniel Gratacos. I come from Spain and I'm chief engineer for Stefan Peter Ansel. I'm the key person in between the driver and the rest of the engineer. So all the information goes through myself to make sure that the, the driver doesn't get the information from everyone. So it, it's only focusing on one, one person. In this case, it's, it's me. Yo! Well, normally what we go do, it's one hour, one hour and a half before the car has to leave. We come here, we make sure that all the systems are working. The day itself, uh, when the car is out, we follow the race uh, by live timing. And then when the car arrives, we do a debrief with drivers and all the engineers around the car, which uh, every department, make sure that all the parts of the car are working properly, what need to be changed or what need to be replaced. And then at the night, we do another rollout. We make sure that the car is race ready. We refuel the engine and then we go to bed normally. It's really hard because there's no communication with the driver and co-driver, so you can guess sometimes about the, the time stop. If it's a short three minutes, maybe it's a puncture or maybe it's another thing. Compared to the circuit where you have every 20 seconds information and it's much harder to, to, to stay calm on this, on this kind of situations. When I was young, I just already saw Stefan racing and, and winning, so kind of, I mean, making a dream come true when you realize you're working with, with a legend. Yeah, I can speak French fluently, so it helped to communicate with the driver. It's easy because sometimes they need to really communicate it in, in their language to make it sure it's, it's, it's translated correctly. Yo! For me, the data analysis is the, it's the best thing. It's just not only what the driver tells you, but what is really transmitted in data. Fascinating stuff there from Chief Engineer Daniel. And here is a special treat for you in just a couple of seconds, because we do encourage you to send in any questions you may have about the team, about the rally, about the car, or any other positions you find interesting within the team. And joining Stefan Moser out in the desert is Daniel. Take it away, guys. Yeah, Daniel is just coming from the car to the, me to the um, carpet here in our little place. And uh, Danny, we want to talk a little bit about the, the questions uh, from our uh, users. And they had a lot of, a lot of questions. Uh, the first question was, uh, what improvement uh, have you done on the car since January? Well, since January, there's, there's no big improvements. Basically, the car is coming straight from Dakar. So there were no improvements. Small adjustments in software updates which is basically what we found in Dakar and we could still have mm. done until then. Next question, I think it's very easy for you. How many kilowatt hours have the battery? <laughs> 55. 55. <laughs> I think this was, was the shortest. Yeah. Uh, why does it look like the e-tron has an exhaust? Okay, <laughs> well, it's a range extender, let's say. I mean, we need to generate electricity to, to make sure that we can do the whole stage. And um, the way to generate the electricity is through a internal combustion engine, which is uh, generating the electricity of, of, of the car. And the next uh, question must be totally easy for the chief engineer of the car. <laughs> how, long, uh, how long do you need to prepare the car for the next day? For next day? Basically so it's five to six hours, depending on the works we have and the, how the stage has been going. If we have to change some extra parts, probably if it's a gearbox or something, then it's three to four hours more. But basically, we go around four to five hours per day. After first impression on the car, how long do you need today? Well, <laughs> today is going to be a little bit longer, maybe six today. Okay. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Danny is the chief engineer of Stefan Peter Hansel. And back to you, Molly.
Thank you very much for answering those questions. And of course, keep those questions coming in. We have two more days left of the rally and this show, and we'll be answering as many of them as possible. Now it is time to have a look at exactly what will be happening tomorrow. So here is the next day. The penultimate stage of the Abu Dhabi Desert Challenge starts and finishes close to the Qasa al Sarab bivouac. A 243km special stage together with 153 liaison kilometers brings the total distance to 396 kilometers. Well, that concludes today's show. Great to hear from uh, Stefan and Edouard about their day in the desert and congratulations with a third place overall and extending that lead to more than half an hour. Like Stefan was saying, it's now about keeping focus, playing it safe, bringing the Audi RSQ e-tron to the finish. And will we see Stefan get his eighth victory at the Abu Dhabi Desert Challenge? We will find out in the next couple of days. We'll be back tomorrow with more Inside Dakar. See you then.